Welcome back to Shoe Lights. I'm going to show you a must have tool that I got for testing if you've done a mirror work properly. Basically, if you have just done a reflow with emitters on an MC PCB, you'll be able to check if that reflow is successful before you install it in the light. Additionally, you can determine what the anode and cathode side of the emitter is before you even lay it on the MCPCB. That's super useful. And if you have a mystery emitter and you don't know what voltage it is, this will also show you all that. So this tool right here, let me get a good focus on it. This is the Unity UT116C. There's others like it. This isn't the only one that does this. But let's just take a quick look at it and see how cool this is. First off, it's designed to not break a diode, not break an emitter. It puts out a uh, high voltage at very low amperage, and if you get it backwards, it's not going to light the emitter up at all, and there's no damage, and if you get the right way, then it lights up. Now, on the side here, it's got a negative. On the other side, it's got a positive, but you can also rotate this um, to any side you want. So I'm going to have it as negative and positive like that right now. And uh, let's just show you quickly how this works. So if you got a little MC PCB here and I've got an Osram on it and I've got the negative over here and I've got the negative over here. So I got to line up and I touch both prongs to the emitter and voila, it lights up. Okay. Now, if I reverse it, so let's turn this around, you'll see that no damage is done. So this is a good way of checking what's positive and negative on the board. Additionally, you can do it with PCBs that have emitters in series. So I will hold it on this one, and you'll see that all four light up. Okay. And I also want to show you that if I do this, now now look at the display on the back here when I do it. Notice it says 21 volts right now. If I hold this on there, there we go. Notice it says 2.55 volts. That is the minimum voltage necessary to run this emitter. So this is a three volt emitter and 2.55 would be kind of the voltage floor to get that thing to work. And these are also, these are SST 20s, SST 20s. These are also three volt emitters. So should we, we should get a similar, uh, let's see, there we go. Yep, 2.4. And let's lastly take an emitter with an unknown voltage, let's say. This is a oddball UV emitter. And I do know what the voltage is, but let's just say we didn't. We're going to go ahead and touch it here, and it lights up, and I read 9.18 voltage. That's because this is a 12-volt emitter. Again, remember that 9 isn't going to be optimal. It's going to be at the kind of bottom end of what can run the emitter. So there you go. And then one last thing I wanted to show you is you don't even have to have the emitters on the PCB. And I actually use it like this a lot. Let's say I've got this emitter, and I'm going to reflow it onto a light. I'll just flip it over here, and you know how on the back it's got the anode and cathode. Well, I'll just, I won't even bother looking it up online. I'll just grab my little guy here and touch it right to the emitter and see it just lit up in my fingers. So I know since this is negative right here on this side, I know that that means that little line on the bottom is the anode. Sorry, cathode, cathode. So cathode, and you can see when I hold this here that there's a little mark in the upper right-hand corner. This is a 209C, Nietzsche 219C. By the way, a uh, little remark about cathode and anode. I, I sometimes have to overthink it because in the diode world, cathode means negative and, the, and anode means uh, positive. But um, in the electron world, in chemistry, it's, it's reversed. Cathode is actually positive and uh, anode is negative. But it just has to do with um, 
I don't want to over-explain it, but in uh, chemistry, you're talking about ions, and in diodes, you're talking about flow of electrons, so it's opposite. But there you go. So that's a great little tool. Highly recommend it. I use it all the time. Another kind of cool thing you could do with it, last thought before I sign off, is let's say this is installed in the light, and you're not sure if you have any uh, shorts before you turn on the light and fry the driver because it's shorted, I would do uh, three steps. I would touch it to, the, so the two leads are, you know, soldered. I would touch it and make sure that they still light up. Then I would touch negative like I should and stretch the positive to touch the housing of the light. So kind of one of these like this and touch the housing over on this side and make sure it doesn't light up. And then and then the opposite, right? Positive over here and stretch it to touch the housing down here. And if those two kind of housing touches do not light it up, you know you don't have a short. All right, guys, I will catch you in the next video.